So whenever you're modeling, issues will happen. It's just part of life, you know, modeling and issues and normals being flipped. It's just a part of life. And one of the biggest is hotlining. So I do want to talk about that. So we'll take this cube in edit mode with tab and I'll right click and subdivide. And now we just have this cube. So I'll shift a add a new cube and we'll just move this cube over and we'll just scale it up a little bit, scale it out. But basically this cube is sitting precisely on this edge that we added. And so if we select both of these and perform a Boolean, everything works out. So, you know, it made a fool out of me. We got lucky. Let's um, fix the scale. So now we actually see that it's having some issues, but you know, it's, it's kind of iffy because if we move it over just slightly, it'll work. But if I press Alt V, we can go under wireframe and actually see what's going on. So using Alt V to jump into wireframes, one of the first troubleshooting tools I want to talk about. Um, keeping track of hotlining, which is what I call it whenever you cut precisely on another edge, is definitely one of those things that will cause you to have a bad time when it comes to booleans. And so just showing this to you in action is just one of those things I do want to emphasize in this video today. However, I'm very optimistic that there's a future coming where such hotlining issues won't exist. Of course, this is requiring that Blender itself change and Blender itself has shown itself to be capable of great change. And so, like I said, I expect to see, you know, at some point in the future that this will become an issue of the past, but this is an issue that comes up more often than not with new users. So I just wanted to point it out because it is something that just happens. The next thing is, you know, um, cuts and their, and their solves. So we have this box. I'm going to press control A and apply to scale. And we're going to use a cylinder to show this example. So we we're cutting in the cylinder and we'll just array it, but I'll press X to change the axis and we'll press V for 3d because we just want to place it here, but place duplicates here. If we look at this, these are all random solves of how Blender normally solves for Boolean geometry at this point in time. These are things that, you know, normally are unseen to the naked eye, but definitely occur whenever you're modeling. And, you know, dealing with these things are probably key to, you know, a longer life and having more success when it comes to modeling. You know, I always refer to bevel as an auditor of sorts. And it's basically because the moment you put bevel on this, it's going to begin skewing at all those points, really showing you the stress of what happens whenever you just let haphazard edges that are skewed basically handle your bevel pathing. And so, you know, when it comes to bevel, not only do you have to think about what you're feeding bevel, which is me having it bevel these areas, but you have to also have to think about the geometry around it and how it's going to path the geometry. Uh, that's being generated growing outwards. And so we can see that at every circle, this has failed in a quadrant. And so for this reason, there are certain tools that exist primarily for troubleshooting reasons. One of my favorites is knife project. So I've shift a inserted a plane and I'm just moving this plane upwards on the screen. And just to really emphasize this example, we're going to shade it as wires so you don't really see anything, but Let's see. All right, getting messages. Anyway, so continuing on, if we select this plane and we shift select the main object, uh, just like you can press Q and go to difference, there's also something called knife. And my favorite thing about knife is that shift clicking it will do what's called knife project. And notice that the moment I clicked it, we received a replacement edge to just kind of fix things up there. And so now we have this bevel that actually looks good. We press one and notice that right here, I'm actually working at 0.7 and the shading is fine for the most part. Uh, we could make the shading better by auto smoothing this. And then, you know, things actually, actually this thing looks terrible. What's our auto smooth set to? And we want to make sure this object has been set smooth as well. There we go. So basically if your Boolean is not set smooth, it's not going to reflect in the mesh. But now that we're looking at this, notice that the shading for the most part looks fine here. Let's say that hypothetically we were working at the default bevel profile of 0.5. 
well now shading artifacts have appeared on the surface and this is just a planar surface so having these sort of artifact issues show up is just asking for trouble so that's why inside of sharpen there is an option under alt where basically alt clicking it will bring up the weighted normal which is how i always jump to weighted normal but it basically is the same weighted normal as the modifier we just made it as part of sharpen because shading is basically the name name of the game when it comes to sharpen but we'll be getting more into that later whenever it comes to dealing with this geometry you know i could be ocd and actually deal with that and you know when it comes to troubleshooting i like to actually go under operations and sometimes modifier scroll to just look at what i'm getting and stop at an early step and just look at what i'm getting before i activate the rest of the modifiers so you know the scrolls are there for for show and to help you you know show how great your non-destructive modeling is but it's also there for you to be able to troubleshoot and analyze what's going on with your model so at this point in time where i have it paused I've decided that I want to interject and bring a weld modifier into the mix. So I'm going to go under add modifier. We're just going to click on weld and I'll just roll the wheel in order to add a weld to this area. And we can just grab this mod and bring it up above the bevel. And now when we turn bevel on, we see that bevels being corrected by the weld that's being here beforehand. And then the way to normal, finally enhancing the shading for good, allowing us to get what I would call a better shape. But when it comes to something this simplistic, it is of course problematic when it comes to deformation. So for that reason, we've also taken steps to making that easier on the hard op side as well. 